what was the world that you sort of discovered when you came back to Iran? What was Iran like in 1970, and specifically in the cultural realm? Okay. Uh, mine is just one of 30 million stories. It's not history, it's just my story, okay? So I'm not a historian, I'm fuzzy with dates, I'm fuzzy with names, but the spirit I capture. Um, I came back to Iran in exactly 1970, uh, trained as a applied arts of the theater specialist and a special year in cinema at NYU. So my main interest was actually in the theater and the performing arts. And at the time, the only place that existed was the cultural center of the Iran America Society, which was this fabulous building done by Frank Lloyd Wright for Baghdad, never built there, transported to Iran, and made into the only viable actually designed space, which had two galleries, two theaters, conference centers, everything that one could ask for. So obviously, I went to work with them. Also, I was, my, my Iranian needed a little practice, so I started in a bilingual space. Um, we programmed, everybody came there because it really was the only cultural center. That's really important. But the whole spirit of the time was a lot of people like myself coming back and having good intentions. But as we all know, the way to hell is paved with good intentions, okay. But there was incredibly, there was a spirit of we want to be, we want to build, we want to help, we want to make a difference and, uh, okay. Whichever way it went, it went, but that's what the spirit was. Um, the Shiraz Arts Festival was its, in, in its like third or fourth year and it had a lot of critics. But at the time, I wrote an article, somebody had criticized it, that is this what Iran needs? That wasn't the point. It's what the world needed at the time. You can't be so uh, territorial in the sense that we're just doing what Iran needs. Iran is part of the world, and which I hope it will become again. And so what was good for the world would eventually be good for Iran. And everything that happened at the time was actually the foundation of everything you see now. It's not a mushroom growth thing where all of a sudden there was uh, lightning and the contemporary Iranian scene grew up after the revolution. No way. Perfect proof is this gentleman sitting next to me who witnessed and nurtured and did all the things that were necessary to develop that whole uh, thing. Kiaro Stami, who everybody thinks is like a post-revolutionary filmmaker, he was trained at the Empress's Institute, the Kanun. Um, what else? I've lost track. What do you want me to say? Well, I'm going to come back to you. Okay, finish. Yeah, we have time. We have no time. But we'll, um, and Comran, um, I'm going to ask you two questions in one. What, what was the sort of Iran that you inherited when you went abroad and came back? And, and why did you think a museum? Say that again. So what did you find when you, you studied abroad, you came back? Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you, you know, maybe you can tell us a yeah. few words about Rash, the, yeah, the artist yeah. space that you opened. When, when I came back to Iran, I wanted to overthrow the system. And uh, we were frustrated because everybody was there doing their things and we were young and restless. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Better. Uh, uh, so it was a very small uh, art community, few galleries, few artists. We were getting together. Nobody respected us as artists, and everybody thought we were crazy and we had long hairs. So we made a club. We called it Rash 29, which was um, located on the street of Rash, and the number was 29. And we thought it was a good idea we could get together and encourage each other. And uh, this, uh, funny enough, this club became kind of an art uh, powerhouse 
And those days, you know, hippies used to come from Europe and America going to Kathmandu to become saint. And they stopped by in, uh, in our club and they played music and sometimes we smoked with them. So, um, so that, that was the scene. And then we were very snobbish. Uh, people from the, let's say, fancy areas, they wanted to come to our club, but we had a bouncer. And we told them that anybody coming here with a Mercedes Benz or something fancy, don't let them in, you know? And we issued cards for the, <laughs> we issued cards for the uh, artists and said, you, this is your club. Uh, a lot of poets and a lot of filmmakers and uh, writers and, and the press, you know, they used to hang around this place. Um, okay, this, is, this, is the, this was basically the scene, you know, and then I had this uh, opportunity uh, uh, with the Queen, you know, we decided to make this museum. Uh, the museum, uh, of course, was just an idea and it was a one-man operation, and he said, uh, take this. I said, uh, she said, how much is it going to cost to make a plan of museum? I said, uh, just give me 5,000 bucks, and, you know, I'll make a plan. And this, with $5,000, you know, I made a plan in my, uh, with a program. And I modeled the museum after the MoMA, Museum of Modern Art, that I knew from my student days.